Hi, I'm Kelly and welcome to Kapowski Reads and this is my June Reading Scottish wrap up. I first of all apologise for any noises that might come up. Uh, it's a very, very sunny day. We're having a heat wave and the world and its wife are either mowing their lawn or doing some sort of banging. I have a neighbour who's been banging something. I, I, don't, I don't know, a hammer? I don't know. So there might be some noise. I am sorry. I have had a great month for reading Scottish books. I have three fiction books I want to talk about. I ended up giving three five-star ratings to my Scottish books. So let's just start with what I read. I'm going to start with my not five-star read, my one, my sole not five-star read, which is The Fair Botanists by Sarah Sheridan. It's okay, I felt bad that this one wasn't five stars, but it won the Waterston Scottish Book of the Year last year. So it's okay, it's it's had its prize, it's had its prize, it doesn't need me to love it. Um, this was set in 1822 when the Edinburgh Botanic Gardens was being created and it's a story about two women called Belle and Elizabeth. Elizabeth has newly arrived in Scotland after the death of her husband. She is going off to live with his family and Elizabeth finds herself living in a house that is next to the new location for the botanical gardens and she meets Isabel, Belle and they both share a love of the botanical gardens and they sort of form a friendship and it's really quite lovely to sort of read about this woman who kind of didn't really have any friends or support network now having uh, a friend and I really enjoyed that. Belle absolutely loves the botanical gardens for a slightly different reason to Elizabeth in that she makes perfumes and sort of scented oils so she's really into you know that smells lovely I can use that and I really just I like their relationship they were very different but they sort of brought each other kind of out of their shells a little bit I love love loved Elizabeth's elderly cousin Clementina she was a a bit of an odd duck an eccentric older lady and to be honest I would have loved the book to have just been her point of view I would have loved to have known more about her additionally this book sort of follows the flowering of a plant called agave americana which I think I only had known about this plant through Ace Ventura I think it's the plant that only blooms every sort of 30 or so years and when it blooms it smells horrific I think that's the plant that is in this book and there's a sort of side plot surrounding that plant and a lot of people really really into the plant everybody wants the seeds this book did not do it for me though I actually found myself almost DNFing it when I had 200 pages left because it's very very slow and maybe I just wasn't in the mood for something that was a slow a slow build but I feel like it was a slow build to a very underwhelming finale I found myself initially loving the characters and then towards the halfway point I couldn't stand Elizabeth and Belle was just quite selfish and inconsiderate and I just did not care. I didn't care what happened to either of them. I cared about Clementina. I liked her but I just it didn't do it for me. I'm not a huge historical fiction girly so maybe that's it. But I have read some historical fiction that I have found compelling and really enjoyed. But this one, it, it was a rare, it was a rare miss, but it won awards. So other people enjoyed it. So it's it's still beloved, just not beloved by me. The next three books though were, they were beloved by me because they were all five star reads and I love them. So where to start? Alphabetical, has to be alphabetical. So let's start with Home by Kayleen Steed. First of all, could we just look at this cover? It's dreamy. Um, this is a debut novel, I believe, and it was ah, I felt I don't even know how I felt after reading it. So it is about Zoe, who was born and raised in a cult, and she left the cult, and years later, somebody from that cult has come to bring her back home. 
and she doesn't want to go back to the cult. But her sister, who had escaped shortly before she did, she's returned back and is married to the leader of the cult, Father. So Zoe feels like she has to go back to, to save her because her sister is in a very dangerous position if she does not do what is expected of her in this cult situation and it is told through a, a dual timeline which I didn't expect but I felt like it worked so well. So we have sort of modern day Zoe going back to the cult, back to the ways that she's fought so hard to sort of get out of her brain. She was almost programmed to to believe these things because she knew no different and then it has flashbacks to young Zoe when she was in the cult and sort of the events leading up to her leaving and this book broke my heart. It was so hard to read at points because it was so tense. Um, it's a book about a cult, it's a book about somebody going back to a cult. I was not, you know, I was so worried that there were going to be bad times ahead and every time I turned the page I would take a quick skim of the next page you know looking for sort of keywords of like oh no oh no are horrible things going to happen and I was just so anxious reading this book because I really liked I really liked Zoe and I really I really just wanted her to be okay and I felt like the writing in this book was so good because the writing there were moments where it would just jump you know, passage of time had passed and it worked really well considering that Zoe was having these almost blackouts of, of memory of periods of time as well where she would find herself in a different location and stuff had happened and she'd had no idea what had happened. So I felt like that way of writing just mirrored the, the story so, so well. I was on the edge of my seat reading this I just I didn't know where it was gonna go but I knew that I wanted good things to happen to Zoe but she was in a position where I was just so worried that that good things were not going to happen this was such a, a very a very tense tense book that I didn't want to put down but I had to put it down because I was I was just so nervous just so I didn't know what was gonna happen and I was so so worried so the, the cult that Zoe was born and raised into sort of harkened back to ye old good days uh, where basically women were subservient and the, the men were the warriors. Um, so it was really infuriating to read a lot of the sort of attitudes within the cult. You know, I'm coming from a modern, a modern gaze where I... I was reading it just getting so annoyed and I hated the way that I feel quite realistically you couldn't trust anybody in the cult. There would be people that would show, you know, they would show some kindness and then just betray each other so, so quickly. And I feel like that, I don't feel like they were necessarily bad people. I think that's just the way that they were were forced to behave in the cult that they were in. I really enjoyed not knowing who I could trust. I feel like I just couldn't trust anybody. I couldn't even really trust Zoe because Zoe couldn't really trust her own mind. And it was like at some point she was like a sleeper agent. I I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed the sort of reading about the dynamics of this cult where the the women were just completely split off from the men and they sort of lived a life of it wasn't even a life it was it was an existence but they lived to sort of serve and they just there was no sisterhood amongst them there was no kindness they were so cold and emotionless and at some points just vindictive and evil to each other and I feel like that was just such an interesting like dynamic because I suppose the expectation would have been that they would have been like a big family but but they really weren't and I I really enjoyed not knowing who I could trust and I feel like I was so tense I was so absorbed in the story as well and I was like emotionally invested in this 
and I don't know if this is the start of a sequel. It sort of ended in a way that there could be another one and I need to know if there's going to be another one. <laughs> I don't know because I haven't done the maths but I will be very very surprised if this book does not make it to my top 10 uh, list for Scottish fiction if not my top 10 for the entire year. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and it's just such a new book as well. I believe it only came out a couple months ago. I want everybody to read it so that we can talk about it but I would say that if you need trigger warnings um, maybe look them up because this book does have quite a lot of horrible horrible things happening in it not in any sort of overly graphic detail but they are alluded to and I think that if you need trigger warnings then definitely check them out because you have to look after yourself. The next five star Scottish fiction that I read was The Sopranos by Alan Warner. This I haven't even taken a second hand sticker off of it yet this book is about a group of friends who are coming down from Fort William to Edinburgh to take part in a choir competition. That's, that's a thing. Um, and it all takes place over one day. The, the book was published in 1998. So for me, it was so filled with nostalgia. And I was absolutely just shocked at how well this male author had written teenage girls in the 90s because I had to go and double check that this wasn't a pseudonym because I felt like these characters felt so real and they were they were the cool girls at school I just I could see it I loved the dialogue so for the previous two books that I've spoken about they didn't really have a lot of Scots language in them there were a few phrases here and there in The Fair Botanists, but The Sopranos had a whole bunch of colloquialisms and slang and it was just so lovely to read about it. And there were so many quotes. I haven't marked up the book, but I think that next time I read it, I'll maybe tab it. I might underline some bits, but I did take uh, actual notes of some quotes that I really enjoyed. And I just felt like it was such it is the most authentic to my own teenage experience book that I've read. I've read a lot of sort of coming of age novels, but I've never really felt, I've never felt so seen by them, but this really encaptured the sort of small town fish heading off to the big city to just go wild, <laughs> go wild. And wild, they, they definitely went. There's a lot of underage drinking, a lot of talk about sex and that's something that I know I saw a few reviews and a few people just didn't like that but I felt like that was so authentic to the characters in this time period but also in that period in their life that it felt it felt real. The choral contest um, was sort of in the backdrop it wasn't really about that it was about these friends and they were all going through different things. Uh, there was one person who was dealing with a terminal illness that had returned. There was somebody who was dealing with poverty, extreme poverty. Somebody who was unsure about how to tell their friends and loved ones about their sexuality. There were people who were worried about just the future. These were 16, 17 year old girls. They were so nervous about what was coming. And they just wanted to have a great time and I felt it was just so such a vulnerable read but such an enjoyable read too. I absolutely loved it. They got themselves into some absolutely ridiculous scenarios and I feel like I wish I read this book when it came out because I think 12 year old me would have gotten something really different from this than a 36 year old me got because as an adult reading this I was like no don't don't go to that man's house. Don't go up. Go, don't go to that man's house. Don't light those fireworks indoors. There were these things that, you know, as an adult, you know that, you know, danger is flashing in your mind. But as a younger person, especially in like the late 90s, there wasn't as much of a, it, it just felt it was such a different time. 
that I feel like these characters just wouldn't have even considered that that could be unsafe, especially coming from such a small place that they would never, it would never have crossed their minds. They, they put themselves in so many scary situations and I was so, so worried for these people too. I was just worried about everybody in books this month, I think. I absolutely loved it. It was so, I sobbed. I cackled. I cackled like a mad witch, which is my favourite thing when I read a book. That's how I know, that's how I know I've got a winner. And I just, oh my heart, I love these characters. They were so diverse as well. They felt, they all felt real and they all felt like I could see aspects of maybe myself, my friends at that age. I could really see it and this is just this is one of the best coming of age novels I have read and again I feel very strongly that this is going to make it to my top 10 Scottish books of the year. Um, it is a film as well, there's a film adaptation called Our Ladies and I have it, I downloaded it on iTunes and I'm planning to watch it, I'm off work next week because it's my birthday uh, so I'm going to watch it at some point and oh, I'm so excited. I've had a friend tell me that the adaptation is a really really good one because I was nervous. You know when you watch a film that's based on a book you really like and you wonder if it's going to be done well so I've been told it's done well and I'm, I'm giddy so I'm so excited. This was just such a summer, such a summery read. Really enjoyed it. If you are wary of books that have a lot of swearing in them as well. This is pretty full of some swears. <laughs> I said it was authentic. Um, there's a lot of uh, coarse language, shall we say, in this book. And it, it has got a fair amount of Scots language that I really enjoyed. It was just, oh, really, really like this book. I want to go back and read it from the beginning already. I loved it. And my last book, my last Scottish read of June is a non-fiction called Carrie Kills a Man by Carrie Marshall. And this book is described as a story of how a transgendered rock singer killed a suppressed suburban dad. And it's basically the journey of the author, Carrie Marshall, of, of their coming out as trans. This is a absolutely fantastic memoir. It's, it's heart-wrenching and it's honest and it's raw. I really enjoyed this book. I really did. It came to me highly, highly recommended. This was funny. It was so funny in parts. I found myself chuckling away to the audiobook, even though I had headphones on and I just didn't realise how loud I was laughing. I was laughing, I was crying, and I just, oh, my wee heart, my wee heart. There were points when I was just so worried for Carrie and I just really grew to love the author and I loved the book. It was a very sort of vulnerable story. It was a very vulnerable read and I'm really sort of honoured that that it was written and that it, it can be shared with other people and I think that it's maybe quite a good thing because there are people that will read this and maybe feel like they're not alone and I think that that's that's the beautiful thing about books is that you're not you're not alone. There are other people that are going through the same thing as you. And I thought this was a very, very well done memoir. It's one of the best memoirs that I have read and I really enjoyed it. So my friend who recommended it to me, you did good. <laughs> so these were my Scottish fiction reads of June. Plus I suppose I'll put a, a placeholder of my actual current read to act as Carrie Kills a Man. I've had such an amazing June for Scottish fiction. I'd love to know if you've read anything that was good that you want to share. Let me know in the comments and let me know if you're interested in any of these books or if you've read any of them. I'd love to know because I really, I really want more people to read these. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go and sit in the shade because it's so hot. Um, <laughs> thank you. Bye.